In this video, we're going to demonstrate some of the features and benefits of the Hikvision Thermal and Optical Bispectrum Network Bullet Camera, the DS-2TD2636-XX. In this case, I'm using the 10mm lens version. Here's a quick look at the datasheet with all the different specifications. I'm not going to read through each of these with you right now, but certainly you can find this online and read through it yourself to find out everything that this camera is capable of. Let's start off by looking at what happens when smoke is introduced into a scene with both a visible and a thermal camera. As you can see on the left side, the smoke impairs the visible scene, but has no effect on the thermal side whatsoever. We know that thermal cameras can see through smoke and can see through certain densities of fog, but there are certain types of gases like CO2 is an example that can obscure a thermal image. Depending on the application, this could certainly be an advantage of having both a visible and a thermal camera available should smoke be a factor that needs to be dealt with at a particular location. Now let's introduce a high heat source in front of the camera. In this case, approximately 10 meters away, I'm just going to use a cigarette lighter. You'll see on the visible side a bright blooming light, but on the thermal side, you barely see the flame. However, the thermal camera with its great sensitivity was able to trigger an over temperature alarm that you can both hear and see on screen as I'm using Hike Central. In this scene, I'm going to demonstrate for you once again that the thermal camera can detect an over temperature situation and trigger an alarm. We're also going to prove that a thermal camera cannot see through water. So in this case, I have a one gallon jug filled with very hot water. I'm going to place it into the swimming pool and you'll see that it disappears. However, notice that when I do bring it back out, the water is still very hot. A new over temperature alarm is triggered. High temperature detected freezer condenser. High temperature detected I'll place it on condenser. the pool deck. High temperature detected freezer condenser. Let it sit there for just a moment and then I'll put condenser. it back in the water again. If you look closely at the pool deck, you can see that there was heat transfer from the water jug to the deck. This is referred to as heat transference. As I remove the jug of water from the pool again, you'll see that we will trigger another temperature alarm from the thermal camera. High temperature detected freezer condenser. 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 This next demonstration is going to show the effect of bright lights on visible cameras versus thermal cameras. I'm just going to use a handheld flashlight. As I first turn the light on and point it at the camera, you can see that the visible camera is basically blinded. However, as I move over into the thermal image, you can't even tell that I have a flashlight in my hand. This would be especially applicable in areas where cars are driving by a particular location and the headlights ultimately flash into the camera. Overall, the effect is quite dramatic. It should be noted that it's not just lights that are very close to the camera, but even lights out in the distance as I'll demonstrate in another portion of this video. Up to this point, we have been looking at our visible camera with IR illumination turned on, which is a feature of the Bispectrum camera. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it off just so that we can see the difference from a non-IR visible camera to our IR visible camera to our thermal camera. And as I'm walking through this scene, you probably don't even notice me until Check I move in front of the received. thermal camera, which Check of course immediately detects received. me with an alarm using simple received. motion detection. As I walk received. back through the scene in the Check opposite direction, look closely at the Check visible camera and see received. if you can spot me in Check the scene. Perimeter thermal detection received. Check perimeter thermal detection. Continuing to use visible without IR, I've changed the setup here just a little bit, but you're going to see as I move into this scene 
The thermal camera is going to detect me using motion detection at this point. An alarm is triggered through Hike Central, but to the visible camera with no infrared illumination, I'm basically 100% invisible. Now as I move back over towards the edge of the bushes, I'm going to duck down and sort of remain motionless. If you look closely, you'll still be able to see me lighting up a little bit through the bushes, but since I'm not moving, the motion alarm from the thermal camera will go away. Should I move again? the alarm would be re-triggered. So in this next segment, I'm going to cover several different things. No IR illumination on our visible. I'm going to move out long range from the camera. We're going to do some distant lighting and we're going to look at motion Check detection. As you can see right received. now, motion detection Check alarm detection from received. the thermal camera. Check perimeter thermal detection so I'm going to start received. to move out Check into the far field. Received. Check perimeter thermal detection 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 received. At this received. particular moment, I'm Check not in view of the thermal Check camera. Perimeter thermal you don't see received. me at this point. I've moved out of its field of view. But notice that I'm not necessarily visible on the visible camera either. Now, there I am now back in view of the thermal camera. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute, why isn't there a motion detection alarm? And that's because I actually have the motion detection area set to the uh, about bottom one third of the image. I'm going to continue to walk out into the far field and again, completely invisible from the visible camera, but still very visible on the thermal camera. Now watch closely as I'm getting ready to shine a flashlight at the camera. Now as you can see, I turned on my flashlight and aimed it at the camera. In the visible camera, we got a nice big bright bloom, but on the thermal camera, you didn't see anything at all. And that's from about uh, 200 yards, give or take. Now I'm gonna start to make my trek back towards the camera. I'll speed things up for you a little bit so you don't have to watch. Now as I begin to move back into view of the thermal camera, you'll notice that as I told you before, the motion detection was set to about Check the bottom third received. or so of the camera. So Check as I came into received. that and my feet hit that Check area and the received. thermal camera detected me, the motion received. alarm was triggered. And after I move received. out of the camera scene, the motion alarm received. goes away. Check perimeter thermal detection received. Check perimeter thermal In this segment, we're going to do a visible with IR1 versus thermal demonstration. Crawling behind the landscaping hedge, you're going to see my lovely assistant crawling behind the bushes, lights up very quickly with the thermal camera, and we even get a thermal Check motion perimeter, alarm. Thermal but on the visible side, Check even perimeter, with the IR illumination received. on, is virtually Check invisible perimeter, to the camera. Received. Check perimeter, thermal now we're going to move on to something a little more fun. Here's my assistant taking a bow before we get ready for the next scene, in which we're going to take a look at both hot and cold liquids and also thermal transference. Located on the stool are two cups, one filled with ice cold water and one filled with hot water. The cold water looks black, the hot water looks white. This is simply based on the color palette that we're currently using. As she takes the utensil from the cup, you can see that the cold temperature has been transferred to the metal utensil. She's gonna drink some of that cold liquid and show you how you could use this to make a very cool horror movie as it looks like blood coming back out. Now as for the hot water, we remove the utensil and you see that the utensil is white due to the heat transference. She's going to drink some of the hot liquid and there you go. Who knew thermal could be so fun? Last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about heat transference and can thermal see through glass. So on the left hand side you see the visible camera looking in through my patio doors. 
and on the right side the thermal just looks like a big black mark I put my hands there on the glass and on the metal frame and you can see as I zoom in that the heat was transferred from my hands onto the metal pane and onto the glass as well as I zoom back out I'm gonna go ahead and open the door up walk inside I'm gonna close the door and I'm going to disappear on the thermal camera side now you might say hey wait a minute I'm seeing something in the thermal now uh, that's just actually the reflection from my computer which is on the outside of the doors and we just learned something that reflections can sometimes be seen in glass.